Okay, so now we have our project and it hasn't been deployed yet. Every time you want to deploy a project, you have to create a release. A release is more like a sign off for a project to be deployed. If you are using the paid version of Octopus Deploy, you can give the permission of creating release to some of your users, for example, tech leads, uh, sometimes like testers can create a release and then you let other people to deploy you let other users deploy the release. For example, if you have a project manager and you have say head of IT plus head of operations and they all have to sign off, once they decide that this deployment can happen, say into production, then they create a release and then say a project manager, a developer, somebody else can deploy it. So you click on create release and every release has a version and as you deploy, it keeps going up. You can manually change it as well. And by default, always the latest version is picked up, latest package, or you can just click on select version and choose a different version. For example, you can go and deploy an older package which is good for rolling back deployments. For example, if I deploy version 16 and something goes wrong, you can go and deploy the previous version to roll back as well. So we leave it to the latest version and we click on save. Our release is created. The only environment that we have right now is dev. So we can click on deploy or you can click on deploy to dev or you can click on deploy to and then choose dev they all do the same thing. If you click on deploy to, then you have to choose the environment. Not only you can deploy the release immediately, but also you have the option of scheduling it. For example, if you think deploying at midnight is safer in terms of like having fewer users on the website, then you can say, I want to deploy it at certain time or on a certain day and at a certain time. And as you see at the bottom, it says your dev environment has one healthy tentacle that can accept this release. And we click on deploy, then deployment starts. Normally when you do this for the first few times, your deployment may fail. Don't get this hard hand, it's normal. Until you get it right, you may just make mistakes because there are a lot of settings you have to do normally and your deployment may fail. So my deployment was successful. To see what happened, you can click on task log. And in here, step by step, you can see what's going on you get all the detailed logs in here also if you want even to get more detailed logs you can click on row and that gives you a lot more details and it's very useful for diagnosing problems if your deployment fails so let's go to server and see what happens so this is the Windows machine that has a tentacle and I deployed to this machine. One thing I've done is that I have created a host entry in my host file. If you don't know where the host file is, it's normally in Windows folder, system32 folder, drivers, and then etc. And the file name is hosts, as you see. And you can, if you don't have domain, you can create a fake domain and put it in your host file and give the IP of 127.0.0.1, which is the loopback IP and now I can go to IIS which is similar to Tomcat or Nginx if you don't use Windows this is a web server and if I go to sites you will see that a site called CICD demo has been created and also in terms of application pools, again, a CICD demo application pool has been created. Bindings are correct. It's been bind to CICD demo.local. Also to make it uh, easier, you can use port 80 when you have binding, that's not a problem. So let's browse the website and see if it comes up in IIS. Yes. So this is, as I said, just an ASP.NET MVC template. It doesn't do anything, but this proves that we managed to deploy a package from Octopus Deploy to this web server. Again, if you are not using Windows and IIS, all you need to do is just to choose the step that matches your target in Octopus Deploy.